Hello. Today we're going to solve the Schrodinger equation for a free particle and a particle in a box. We start off with the time-independent Schrodinger equation minus h bar squared over 2m times d2 psi by dx squared plus v psi equals e psi. And V is the potential, whatever that may be, could be gravitational, could be electric, could be whatever. E is the energy, and psi is the wave function. Now for a free particle, V is zero. There is no potential in which it moves. And the particle is simply moving along a line of length L. For simplicity, we're keeping this in one dimension. So the Schrodinger equation becomes minus h bar squared over 2m d2 psi by dx squared. The potential term isn't there because it's zero, so that equals e psi. Or multiplying through by minus 2m over h bar squared, we get that d2 psi by dx squared equals minus 2m over h bar squared e psi. Now, we remember that e is p squared over 2m and that p is h bar k. The proofs of both of those are in others of my videos. And that means that p squared is 2me and that k squared equals p squared over h bar squared, which means that k squared is 2me divided by h bar squared, which of course is this term here. And so we can write that d2 psi by dx squared equals, sorry, minus k squared psi. And that's the wave equation. That should be a minus there. That's the wave equation for the particle that is moving freely in no potential. What is the solution to that equation? Well, it has to be solved by a complex function because of this minus term here. And what you find is that it's solved by psi equals a e to the i k x plus b e to the minus i k x. How is that true? The answer is that if we differentiate uh, twice with respect to x, d2 psi by dx squared, we effectively have to bring an ik down there twice, so we get a ik squared e to the ik x plus b, and now we bring a minus ik down twice, so we get minus ik squared e to the minus i k x. Well, i k squared is minus k squared because i squared is minus one. And i k squared is minus k squared. So we can take the two lots of minus k squareds outside and we get minus k squared times a e to the i k x plus b e to the minus i k x. But of course, that term is simply psi, and therefore you get what we wanted in the first place, which is d2 psi by dx squared is minus k squared psi. So that means that this term here, psi equals a e to the i k x plus b e to the minus i k x, is the solution for the wave equation for a free particle. Now, as before, we've already seen that momentum 
equals N H over L. We showed that momentum was quantized. N is an integer value, H is Planck's constant, and L is the length of the line along which the particle is moving, of course, in one dimension. But E equals P squared over 2M. And so consequently, E equals P squared, which is N squared H squared over L squared, divided by 2M. And that tells you that energy of this free particle is quantized in these units. Because N can either be 1, 2, 3, and so on. And if that particle moves between these energy levels, then there will be an energy difference, which is, represents the difference between one energy and another, and that will give off a photon. And the photon will have an energy, which is delta E, which equals H nu, where nu is the frequency of the light of which that photon is a part.